the steering rack was removed some time ago and all I did was clean it up and paint the center section. I am going to look at the secondary damper. Under here and under here there are little dampers and they look like this. This is a, a new one from ESM. You can only buy the one that fits under this secondary damper. So I'm going to take that off and see what it looks like. Um, The one under here is not obtainable. Anyway, let's just take that off and see what it looks like. So I'm removing the damper cap. You can see there is the. Let's clean that up. You can see the old one. Well, that's in focus. You can see the old one there is um, getting so a little bit concave compared to the new one. So we'll pop the new one in. Just clean this up a little bit. There don't appear to be any shims, there's just a, a simple washer here. We'll put the new one in. Now when it comes to lubrication, uh, these ball joints are covered by rubber boots and um, normally what happens is that you uh, inject through this grease nipple, you actually inject oil, um, Hypoid EP90 should go in there. I'm actually going to add a little bit of grease to the rack itself uh, as well as put some oil in, so we'll see how that goes. So I'm first going to push the rack out. Yeah, add grease. I'm going to add grease here. This is probably the worst way to do it, but still, can't think of what else to do. I think what I might try and do is take off the uh, the oiling nipple and see if I can get some EP90 down there. I took this off before and cleaned it up. Yes. Maybe I should put the boot on first. These are the original clips that were on the car. I think they'll be better than cable ties. That's the hope. I bought new track rod ends, of course. No point in using the old ones, which are decades old. There are two types, uh, two different threads. I think the earlier cars have a smaller thread. The track rod end comes with a little grease nibble to insert there. So we'll just screw that in. use a wrench but never mind, it's fine. Now the end of the steering rack um, has a lock nut. Now I thought I was quite clever. I took a photograph of the of the old uh, track rod end and uh, can count the number of threads that are left. What you normally do is 
as you unwind the old one, you count the number of turns. So this is um, probably not quite as accurate, but uh, it should roughly be correct. So we'll put this on, put a little bit of copperies on first. And the track rodent goes on. But it's in roughly the right position there. And we'll pump these full of grease once, it, once it's installed on the car. Thank you, Mrs. Clackett. My pleasure. Okay, steering rack installed. Uh, bolts tightened to the recommended reasonably tight amount, since no torque figure is given in the manual. And then, somewhat comically, the car is pigeon-toed because we had to move the tires. And on the inside, there's the splined end of the rack which fits onto the steering column. And then the oiling nipple or grease nipple. All that's left to do is to connect the track rod ends. Currently they're upside down. Okay, so refitting the steering column to the car. The bottom of the steering column has this clamp and that's secured with a pinch bolt. And according to the manual, it's important that the split there in the clamp aligns with a mark on the pinion. There's the pinion and you can just see a little mark there. So the steering column is uh, attached to the dash with this clamp in two parts. Uh, a couple of bolts, nuts and washers there. And then the top part of the clamp is secured by these machine screws with these chrome nuts.